Hugo Heenan, how much have you been enjoying your rugby at Leinster? Yeah, it's been great. I suppose the weekend was one of those special days against Toulouse. It was uh, 42,000 and you could feel it in the in the stadium. It was great atmosphere and great weather for it. So, um, yeah, enjoying it now. But two big weeks ahead, um, some tough training, but uh, looking forward to the final now. On the semi-final against Toulouse, it was a really impressive performance from Leinster. Yeah, it was good, um, but we know we have to match that or, or better now. Um, firstly, against Munster this week, but then also for, for La Rochelle in, in the final, we know what a challenge that will be. And obviously this weekend, then, you, you face Munster. It's in the Viva Stadium. It's always tough when you come up against Munster. Yeah, 100%. Like It's, it's the derby uh, game, isn't it? So um, we, we always know what they'll bring, their motivation and uh, intent and it's 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 such a big game for them as well so um it'll be a tough one um few lads might get a get a run out as well so um it's it's uh one of those games that you always want to be involved in and the fact that it's in the viva and that there's going to be such a big crowd um there means that it's going to be such an exciting game so looking forward to it and will it be a case of maybe resting some players to look ahead to the Champions Cup final? Yeah, I think a few lads should should get a run out. Uh, we'll see what Leo and Shu have uh, in mind for, for the squad. But um, we're, we're lucky in Leinster to have such great um, depth and um, strength in numbers as well. So um, it's it's been competitive in training. Everybody's been sticking their hand up uh, for it. So it's uh, it's, again, one of those games you want to be involved in. Yeah, I can't imagine. I just said it to Jameson there too about how competitive of a team it must be when you just see all the names on paper. It's it's incredible, the, the strength and depth in the squad. It must be difficult for some players to not be getting a look in at times. Do you see that in the squad at all? Yeah, um, like I'm sure there's a lot of lads uh, in the stand on the weekend who would love to be, be playing, but um, they're bringing the best version of themselves to training every week. They're putting their hand up to it, and I think that's what's improving the whole team and getting performances like that. It's the fact that our training so competitive, and um, I think a few lads will get a run out this weekend as well so they can stick their hand, hand up, and you never know uh, who's going to be playing in the final then. And you've had a few tough defeats um, last season, the previous season. You'll be hoping that this year is the year that you, you can do it, you can win the Champions Cup. Yeah, personally, like I've only been involved in it uh, in the European side, I suppose, for two years, and losing to Saracens in the quarter, and then La Rochelle last year, it, w it was pretty gutting. I'm not going to lie. So, um, the Heineken Cups, the one you want to be uh, winning, the one you want to be involved in on, on these days. So, um, we're going to take all those learnings f from those games and the experience that we've we've gotten, and hopefully use that to, I suppose, put in a better performance than we did in in those two days out and. Um, hopefully that'll be enough to, to, to get the win. And you're coming up against La Rochelle, Ron Nogara side. He's going to know a lot about you. He'll have his homework done, that's for sure. It's going to be a tough game. And as you said, because of last year, the defeat that you took to them, you know, you'll be really hoping this is the year. Yeah, they're a serious side. They're obviously coached very well. Um, so it's as, it's as tough of a challenge you can get over in France at the moment. So, um, yeah, we're, we're focusing on Munster now this week, but... Um, we'll be we'll be flicking the switch pretty quick and focusing on that then after and yeah it's it's exciting times now. Yeah, absolutely. And just you on your journey, it hasn't always been straightforward. Um, for Blackrock College, you didn't always make the team. Um, you know, which is incredible to see someone like you then to go on playing with Ireland to be a standout player and then a standout player for for Leinster. What was it like, I suppose, in Blackrock College when you weren't making the first team? I think it was the, the C or D team you were on for quite a while. Yeah, I suppose I didn't know any better, to be honest. Like, I was always just trying my hardest, working away. And I suppose that probably paid off as I, I suppose, climbed the ranks in my later years. But um, I always enjoyed my rugby in school, no matter if it was for, for the Ds or for the SCT. So that was the beauty of it. And I suppose it's not too dissimilar to Leinster in that you have 200 in a year and you're always going to have a competitive year group and there's five or six teams so I think that's what drives standards in Black Rock and um, one of the reasons they're so successful and one of the reasons you see so many um, lads coming through from, from Black Rock and the likes of Michaels and whatnot so um, yeah. And you obviously worked extremely hard to get to where you are um, it, it's just incredible, I suppose, for people to see that, you know, that might be playing rugby at the minute, any sport or even in a career to to look ahead, to go, look, it is possible. 
Exactly, yeah. Like, I never looked too far in the distance, to be honest. It was always trying to just make the next team, make the next team and keep going away. So that'd be the advice I'd uh, give to any young lad who's in a similar position, just to keep working hard and um, to keep focused on, on the challenge ahead. And you'll never know uh, where, where, you, where you'll end up and to, to not be ambitious enough to, to I suppose, uh, to keep believing and keep dreaming. And was this always the aspiration to, to play for Ireland, to play for Leinster? Yeah, like I would have been a Leinster supporter growing up, going to the games as a kid. So I don't think it was something that I envisaged myself doing. But um, I suppose as I got older and started getting close to the sub academy and academy, it, it did become a, um, a hope and dream for me. So um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's cool times this and um, I suppose dream coming uh, coming up to try playing that that final now. Brilliant. I'm going to ask you a few quick fire round questions. I asked the lads as well. So, who is the fittest on the team? Fittest, I'd say. You probably just asked them. Jemison Gibson Park, I'd say. A few of the scrum halves, Luke McGrath's probably there, thereabouts as well. Who is the fastest on the team? Tommy O'Brien. He's got the um, quickest, quickest speed this year. Yeah, the stats don't lie. <laughs> Who's the best in the air? Um, not James though I'll say Jimmy O'Brien not you? <laughs> no can't be voting for myself no. <laughs> and what was my last one um, fastest fittest best in there the best tackler um, Will Connors he hasn't played for a while but uh, a chop tackle can't beat it brilliant and how has the transition been from coming from the Ireland squad back into Leinster yeah it's, it's seamless like you you I suppose it's tough the first week or two getting back up to speed with everything but um, I suppose you've been in Leinster long enough to, to pick it up pretty quick and um, um, yeah that's the standard I suppose it's expected that you, you can't be coming in and uh, slouching and taking it easy so. And overall how is the, the mood in the camp, what's it like with the lads, is there a good buzz in the team? Yeah no it's exciting times, it's finals rugby, it's the, the weeks you want to be involved in and Munster game this week means that it's it's such an important game again and um, there's a bit of a buzz about that as well as the final so um, it's a, yeah it's great.